you will be interested in, I've no doubt. Um, I keep hearing figures. I did this talk last year, and, and the figures this year are just phenomenal. 85% of people, Google users, prefer video over text. Google annotations is something you need to be aware of. I was playing around with it yesterday, putting a link into a video. These are huge developments in video, and every piece of research will tell you that there is more take up on that than any other form of social. So what we're going to do today, we've got three speakers here um, who are going to tell you how they've cut the video idea for their sites or for their projects. Because um, it is a vastly expensive business if you start out with a camera crew and a professional sound and lighting person. That's going to cost you north of seven, eight thousand pounds straight off. So this session is more about different ways you can create video for your site. And I'm going to start off just by showing you, showing you a few slides. And one of them, I don't know if Colm's still in the room. Colm Henretti? They might have pushed off. Now here's a chap that uh, was here earlier from Hostel World. And what he did was he did a video himself. He came to London, he filmed himself in several locations over several months, and he's had more than a million views for Hostel World. Because if you put London into YouTube now, his video is going to come up first. Now that's a very simple, basic way to do video, is to do it yourself and do it properly, but show people 10 ways to, uh, to see London. Simple idea. Another way is to get your staff to do it. This is a little exercise we did with a company called Expert Africa. It's a safari company. And we took three people from the staff there and trained them on the basics of video, which would be lighting, microphone, sound, that sort of sound, that sort of thing. As it's usual when you get three people trying out new media, one will say, I didn't have time to do it. One will say, I couldn't get the camera to work. And the third person usually comes back with some half decent stuff. So what we did then was to edit the film professionally based on the, on the content that the staff brought back to the UK. An interesting way of working, because all you're then paying for is a bit of training costs and a bit of editing time as well. Third way, user generated. It's, it's such a vast area. I'm not going to spend much time on this. It's covered up by the previous speaker, Alistair, in the psychology of social media. User generated is going to be huge, and I'll leave it to you to work out what you want from it. Fourth, Retro, a very interesting project we just did for Erna Lowe, who celebrates its 80th anniversary this year. Erna died 10 years ago, but the ski company carries on. And what was lovely about that project, we wrote the book, the biography, but we also found 33 rolls of 60mm film, cine film, from the 40s, 50s and 60s. And it's beautiful period uh, ski footage. And we created seven or eight videos for that. We had a, a launch at the Coronet Cinema in Notting Hill about three or four weeks ago. And it was a really interesting project to work on. So while you're all going headlong forward in search of new media and content, don't forget to look after your history as well. If you've got any old content, any old film, or your clients and customers have got that film and you put an appeal out to use it, then it's a really interesting way to sit you aside from the rest of the field. And uh, that ugly mug there was thanks to Alistair, who's just left the room, I think. Google Hangouts, quite an interesting potential. If, for example, you're an archaeology specialist, you can get the archaeology chap in Oxford, put him online with 10 other people in the office, and allow your customers to view that. Every Google Hangout automatically goes to YouTube as a recorded film, so you've got free content there to use in any which way you want to do it. Now, those are five snapshots, and now I'm going to invite three people to give a much better and in-depth story about the way they went about uh, creating video. And first up is James from Inside Japan Tours. He'll tell you about it, but the basic premise was they needed video. They didn't have much or very little. So they created a competition to find two bloggers to go to Japan. And there, as James will tell you, under strict instructions to come back with video. So I will let you, James, come on up, tell you more about his video project. Yeah, that's me. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is James Mundy from Inside Japan Tours, as, as Steve has just said. Um, 
I'm not a video expert, social media expert. I am a Japan expert. Look at me. Does this look like Japan? I think it does. Um, um, Inside Japan Tours, um, we're in our 12th, 12th year. Um, we we specialise in Japan. We do everything Japan. Uh, that's what we do. It's just Japan. Uh, when you've got one destination that you deal with, you need to work with all your tools that you've got, uh, all the tools available to make the most of what you've got to to sell um, our superb product, our expert knowledge, um, and and our the, the passion that we have for our destination um, to the public. Um, so I mean we've got a great website. I mean, we, we have lots of, uh, lots of information on there, general Japan information. We, have, we, we work with various social media plat platforms. Um, we've got uh, Facebook, you know, pretty good engagement on that. We've got Twitter. We've got a great blog, which has lots of sort of personal sort of stories on there and, and ideas. Um, but it's, it's how, how do we get that, that message across to uh, the people that haven't been lucky enough to go to Japan. Um, I mean, Japan, as you may or may not know, um, it's, it's got a great culture, all the geisha and uh, the, the, the swordsmiths that we work with, the, the bowing and they're taking off your shoes and things like that. People have heard of the super loos. Um, I mean, how, how do you get these sort of different experiences across to people, the, the stunning countryside? and that the inspirational people that you meet along the way on your trip. Um, we, we have a great feedback system at, at Inside Japan Tours and our website, feedback direct from our customers, straight online. Um, but as we found out when we went to the ATO conference, which links into Alistair, the previous speaker as well, um, we met Steve Keenan. Um, oh, I'd met Steve over, over a number of years and it had always been banging on about bloody importance of video and you should get video and video's great and it's the future and, and we listened to him and thought yeah he, he's right uh, a video you know, it says what you know a thousand words or, or 20 pictures can do in, in, in just a couple of seconds um, at the ATO conference in, in Madeira um, we, we heard from Steve who, who talked about uh, what he just mentioned there, the, the video they did for Expert Africa. Um, he talks about um, Intrepid and their video uh, they did. Um, and we were inspired, Steve, we were inspired by you. Um, we thought we've got to go away and do something. We didn't have any real decent video on our website. How are we going to go about it? Um, We'd, we'd looked at, in the past, we looked at um, various companies and, and, and thought, right, go out to, to, to Japan for two weeks, create some video, film for us, um, how much you're going to be. And, it, and you're talking I, quotes of you know, 10K to, to 30K to, to a, lot, a lot more than that even. So, um, I mean, for, for a company like ours, um, it's a lot of money um, and, and something that, we, we can't just jump into. Um, so we walked away from the ATO conference. We wanted to get video and images, digital content uh, to put across our website and various social media platforms. We wanted to build up an interest for Japan. That's our only destination, of course. Um, and not break the bank doing it. Um, so the idea we came up with was, was let's, let's run a competition. Um, tap into a lot of the blogging uh, talent out there. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, everyone blogs. A lot of the young, young, uh, young people blog. Um, there's some great people sort of putting little films together and some, some great photographers out there, some people writing out there, some great stuff. So we thought we'd tap into that. Um, we'd offer um, regular um, customers, would-be customers, potential bloggers, the chance to go out to Japan. Uh, we asked them on our 12th birthday to create 12 reasons as to, as to why they should go to Japan for us. And in the most imaginative, innovative way, 
um, express that in their, in their blog. Um, we thought we'd create a bit of an online buzz as well um, with, with people sort of sending in their blogs. We hope that um, they would be referencing Inside Japan tours within their blog. Um, there'd certainly be, we'd hope, some positive uh, feeling from the blog towards Japan. It's all good for Inside Japan tours. Um, social media engagement, increase our, increase our sort of followers on Facebook and, and Twitter and, and, get, and get something going on, on, um, on our social media platforms. Um, and of course, the, the main reason was to get um, plenty of digital content, images, video, a good blog. Um, we had a lot of entries. Um, we, we had all sorts of entries. We had all sorts of styles. Um, this one was, was quite a sort of a, um, a fashionable, sort of from a fashionable angle. We had this one, for example, quite from a, from a cutesy, young fashion sort of angle. We, we had a, an artsy, uh, culturally minded um, range of blogs, such as this one. Um, all good in their own way, and uh, you know, a too too cool for school, sort of stylish, sleek um, blog um, entries, we, and we had some absolutely awful stuff as well. Um, but the result we had in the space of the month that we run this, I mean, so I mean, we we had the conference in, in about June. Um, we ran the competition in in August, and we got over over a hundred entries in one month, which was which is pretty good, I think. Um, we had we had as I say there 900 votes um, through through Facebook and a reach of about 24,000 um, people seeing those those blog voting um, posts. Um, we've 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 seen coverage in various newspapers, trade consumer newspapers online, um, and we've got some amazingly keen bloggers in Japan. And we haven't spent much money, which is great. Um, these guys um, won the trip. A guy called Glenn Morris uh, and his partner Nick Beckett, uh, aka two, for t two to Tokyo, and uh, they're currently in Japan as we speak. Um, they, they've got a 21-day trip in Japan, all paid for, um, and they're, they're traveling. From, from Tokyo to Kyoto, staying at temple lodgings, uh, attending festivals, um, drinks with a geisha and that sort of thing. Um, and I mean, we, we couldn't have done any of this without the, the support from our suppliers as well. Virgin Atlantic um, came in with it, with uh, a, a couple of seats for our bloggers, which was excellent news. Uh, I, I mean, they have massive reach with their, their various uh, social media um, networks. Um, and we, our suppliers in Japan as well, uh, various hotels and traditional rear can, uh, they su supplied complimentary or heavily discounted um, accommodation along the way and services, which, which obviously helped our, our funds. Um, to Tokyo, never been to Japan before. The idea was they'd go to Japan uh, as first timers, like many of our customers, and be able to trail through Japan, snapping away, and they are, um, and they're tweeting away. They're, they're doing some, some really good sort of uh, pics um, through Twitter and, and various thoughts traveling along the way um, and producing some really good, good stuff. Um, uh, they're, they're obviously there to um, do video as well. Um, and we're confident that we're going to get some, some excellent material on the back of this. Um, so, I mean, I would, I would urge you to follow as I say, right now, for those people who've got your computers out, your laptops out, or your, uh, your phones out, follow um, at 2 to Tokyo on Twitter, or look at uh, the 2 to Tokyo uh, wordpress.com, um, and follow their trip. And we should have some excellent video for you soon. Um, um, they, they, haven't, they, they haven't sort of produced a whole lot of video right now, so... Um, I mean, their blog suggests, the original blog entry suggests that they are more than capable of doing it. Um, but I asked Glenn yesterday if he could put together a quick 90 second video, um, which he has done. Um, but 
I'm not sure how much time I've got. So, um, so, so I, I will actually encourage you to follow this um, and, and have a look for yourself. Watch this space, and I will, uh, I will update you through Steve um, so at that latter point. Um, and I would watch the, our inspirational video, which was the, um, uh, the intrepid video, um, which you will see soon. Um, so right, right now, rather than... Uh, right, it's, it's not the best. It's, uh, it was done in... Um, I say, I gave him a day's notice. And, uh, <laughs> no. But it just, it just gives you an idea of, um, of what they're doing. Or not, as the case may be. So, so I think perhaps we should, <laughs> we should um, watch the next video. There you go. There you go, Steve. I'll leave it to you. All right, thank you. Um, but, but I say, for a relatively little, little financial outlay, um, we've got some great bloggers on on hand. Not quite as uh, clean and professional as. Film, film artists and uh, sorry, filmmakers and, and professional bloggers, but um, we've got some excellent guys on, on hand doing a great job. So I encourage you to follow them. Um, it's a cheap way of uh, great getting video. the results. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> I also bumped into James' business partner, Alistair, at a conference in London recently. And he said another spin off was they got about £5,000 worth of SEO based on the increased links to their site as well while the blog was, uh, competition was running. So it has an extra spin-off effect as well as producing possibly 15 videos at a very cheap rate for a specific destination like Japan, which is incredibly useful to have. So next up, I'm going to invite Nicola Frame from Intrepid Travel and the way that they've started working with a food blogger to get their product uh, known further across the world. Very interesting story, which I'm sure you will agree with. And I would like to present you to Nicola Frame from Intrepid Travel. Uh, I'll start off with the video, um, as James did touch on that, um, just to give you a feel for what we're going to be talking about. So Intrepid is a global tour operator. Uh, we go to lots of destinations, so we're very lucky in that respect that we have a lot of different uh, destinations that we can market. But our biggest selling destination is Vietnam. I'm just going to show you the video that we made with Perennial Plate.
Okay, so we actually didn't set out on this project thinking we want to make a video. We actually um, set out wanting to promote some of our food trips. Um, as I say, we don't just go to Vietnam, we don't just do food trips, we, we do a lot of um, cultural, active, adventure style trips. Um, and what we wanted to do with this was give a taste for the destination and the kind of experience people could have if they travel with us. I don't know whether any of you have been to Vietnam, if you have, hopefully you recognised some elements of the culture there, the motorbikes, the sort of uh, the speed at which things move, the, the street food. Um, and if you haven't been, then hopefully uh, it, it's a bit of inspiration to, to encourage you to go. But why did we work with Perennial Plate? Um, as I say, we were running a marketing campaign to try and promote our tours that had a lot of street food and cooking classes and this kind of thing. And we've got a few of those in Vietnam. So this was back in February last year. Um, and as part of that marketing campaign, the PR team, which is spread around the world, um, each were looking in their market for media that they could help to sort of spread the word about our food tours. And our PR consultant in the US said, well, I've, I've come across these people, perennial plate. They're food bloggers. Um, and we do try and get out into media outlets that aren't just travel magazines or travel um, newspaper columns. We try to reach people through whatever media they're reading. And there's a lot of touch points between food and travel. So we came across Perennial Plate. They are um, food bloggers who have a weekly webisode. They spent a year traveling around the States filming um, their adventures in food. And we felt like they were a really good brand fit with us. And that's what was really important. Um, they're into sustainable, adventurous food. We're into sustainable, adventurous travel. So they seemed a really good fit. But they don't do it in a really sort of preachy style. They're very fun and engaging, and that's the kind of uh, tone that Intrepid tries to get across in its marketing as well. Their audience matched ours really well. Um, we predominantly have um, about 60% females, sort of 25 to 39. As you can see, their audience is very similar to ours. So we felt we were talking to the kind of people that might want to travel with us. We knew that their normal webisodes got about 20,000 views. Um, as a sort of piece of media coverage, we felt that would be quite OK. We set that as our target. OK, if we can get that average sort of 20,000 views and create some content that we can use on our website, that would be great. Um, and we also knew that, that Daniel, who is one half of Perennial Plate, he's a trained chef. He's a regular contributor to Huffington Post. So it meant we had that reach. Um, as well as the video being created for our website and for their blog, we knew that it had the potential to get out there further. Um, and also, one of the big things for us was that they are professional food bloggers. We'd seen what they could produce, and we thought the quality was really high. I mean, in the past, Intrepid has um, paid for staff to go around the world and uh, film their travels um, about four or five years ago now, so the content was looking really out of date. Um, but it is quite costly to do that, to pay for all the travel and, and the salary of that person while they're doing that. So this was a really good way of getting something that looked professional. Um, and matched our brand, but it was also a bit of a PR exercise as well. So the cost to us for this video was um, paying for a press trip for two people um, and the production costs. Um, and if I say that it came in at about the cost of £4,000, I mean, there's no way we could have produced that ourselves for that amount of money. So our objective probably look... Um, very modest, given what we achieve with it. Um, as I say, we were thinking, well, they get 20,000 views per webisode. Uh, that would be great. Um, the benefit of working with a third party, like any PR, is that third party endorsement. It's not us saying our trips are fantastic and vibrant and enjoyable. It's actually a third party putting that content out there. Um, and we wanted to be able to use something on our new website, which launched a couple of months ago. So we thought, we've got this outdated video content. We want to get something else. This will be something that really helps promote one of our top selling destinations. Um, the results, as you can see, we were like very surprised. Um, we managed to get 300,000 video views. Um, got a lot of media coverage, particularly in the US, but also globally. Um, got picked up by Huffington Post, it was a Vimeo staff pick, it got shortlisted for awards. So it created a bit of a buzz um, that would have been really difficult for us to do if we just produced this video ourselves uh, because they had that sort of reach and influence within their, their sector. Um, people primarily interested in food, but a lot of those people, we believe, interested in travel too. So from that, I mean, as I say, we didn't set out thinking, let's go and create some video. We, we set out to do some PR for our food trips. Um, but this was really successful. We could see the sort of social media um, 
pick up of it as well. Um, really like the content that they produced, really good brand fit. So we've started working with them on a real food tour, world tour, I should say. Um, they're actually traveling uh, to 12 countries over 18 months on six trips. So we're sort of pairing them up um, so that it doesn't cost us as much. So for example, they've just traveled to Japan and China um, on one trip just to keep our, our costs down with the travel from the US. And what we're getting from that is multiple videos from every trip, uh, raw footage, which we own, uh, so we can use that in marketing materials uh, and campaigns in the future. Images, they're producing recipes for us. Um, as I said, Daniel, one half of the, of the crew, is a trained chef. Mira, the other half, is the producer and camera girl, so they bring both the skills that, that we need. And it, it's all about content when it comes to sort of marketing and PR for, for destinations and tour operators. So we're getting recipes, trip reports, images that we can use. So we can be putting those out on social media and on our website. Um, this time we're being a bit more savvy about it and actually going in with our eyes open and saying, okay, let's have a proper social media uh, marketing and PR campaign around each of those trips that they're doing. Um, and let's think about the lead generation and the sales generation from that as well. I mean, that's the value for us as well. It's not just the content that they've produced. We know that people are clicking through to our site, so um, let's try and get a return on investment in terms of uh, the number of people that, that go on to book one of our trips. So we're offering a discount to their followers. Uh, so this time, yeah, we've got lots of uh, slightly more stretching targets in place around um, how many views we want of the video, what sort of web traffic we're looking to drive to our site, um, what sort of sales generation and lead generation, so how many people click through that go on and sign up to our newsletter, etc. And we put values in all of those things so we can calculate the return on investment, which we believe will be pretty good. Um, as I say, they've only just returned from their first of these trips. Um, if you go to our website, intrepidtravel.com forward slash perennial dash plate, um, you'll be able to see the latest uh, video. They've just returned from Japan. Um, I've only ever been to Tokyo, but I watched that and I thought, wow, <laughs> the food looks fantastic. But I think you can see from the Vietnam video, it's not just all about food, it's how it fits into the, the tour and the sort of cultural experience. Um, and without telling you sort of what we're paying for the partnership as a whole, um, they're producing multiple videos from each destination and it works out at a cost of about £4,000 per video. And that's for everything, including our marketing and promotion costs and travel costs. And we just couldn't do that ourselves in-house. So that's just one way that you can go about it. Thank you very much. Fascinating stats and figures there. Very kind of Nicola to break down the figures for us all to get a real idea of how much the stuff costs. And is that £4,000, Nicola? Is that going forward as well? Each of the ones you commissioned, the 16 will work out about £4,000 each. Yeah, they're producing multiple videos, so the actual, sorry, they're producing multiple videos from each trip. So um, they're producing dozens yeah. of videos, but, but that's the cost per video broken down, which, you know, is very good value from our point of view. And they get, but they keep, get to keep copyright of the film, presumably? Um, of the completed film and the raw footage, um, we, we have uh, joint rights to use. Okay. And of course, you get a credit on each of the films with thanks we to Intrepid. We do. Yeah. I mean, it, it's deliberately not sort of branded as an Intrepid film um, no. for that third party endorsement that I was talking about. So you notice when I showed the Vietnam video, at the end, there's a very subtle sort of thanks to Intrepid Travel. But of course, on their website where people see it, where it's posted on Huffington Post, it does mention the brand. But it's deliberately not over branded. Okay. And is there any way you can check any direct correlation with bookings as a result of the video? Yep, I mean, we've got trackable links all set up so that if people click through from seeing the video, we're tracking that. Uh, we didn't do that the first time, um, uh, but we're doing it now. Okay, lovely. Well, very interesting chat. Uh, so that's two ways to get video in, very interesting and completely distinct ways of doing so. And I'd like now to invite Matt Carroll up, who's Meteor Arc, who has taken away on a trip with MSC Cruises, run by Lindsay Devon and with six bloggers on there, I believe. Uh, so I think the premise was, I won't take Matt's story away from him. I think it was six bloggers, but they were allowed, they had the facility of having three film crews with them. So they could be filmed doing whatever they wanted to do on the ships. So I'd like to invite Matt up to tell you more about that project. Thank you. Matt Carroll, Meteor Arc. <laughs> 
Good afternoon. Can you guys hear me back there? No. <laughs> it's a good start. Um, while Mark's digging out that, brilliant. Okay. Um, so what I want to do first of all is um, give you a little bit of a, a kind of background on what we do at Media Arc. Um, so these guys, what's interesting about the two projects we've just heard about now is that um, obviously this is coming at it from a, a uh, very much a brand's perspective. And what we do at Media Arc. Um, so our, we're strategic content specialists and um, we work across video, um, print also, um, we produce um, TV shows and uh, um, all kinds of sponsored content. Now what makes us kind of different to a lot of other um, production companies or as we like to think of ourselves production agencies, um, the difference between us is that our background is in um, traditional travel media. So we've got over 20 years of experience working for um, pretty much most national newspapers and magazines in this country. Um, and we're still doing so. Um, we also are still making editorial TV shows. So what that means is that we have a really deep understanding of, um, of the end user, the guys that, that, that you guys want to talk to. We know what makes them interested. We also know what makes the media interested. And in terms of social media as well, what kind of turns people on in that way. So that really informs um, what we do creatively. Um, everything we do is strategically driven, so it all starts with a blank sheet of paper and um, your aims. So it's not just about creating great content and throwing it out there. I know Alistair in the previous discussion was talking about um, the need to really create content uh, that's outlet specific or to tune the content for different outlets rather than just spitting the same content all over the place and that's something we really do so we we understand what each of these outlets are, are looking for and also what you guys are looking for in terms of the audience and we tune the content and the concept very much to fit those things um look at this i love powerpoint is this going to work for me there we are just a, a little idea of some of the brands that we've worked with um, over the past few years. So it's uh, quite varied. We specialise in travel, food um, and motoring. We also work with a, a, a huge range of grooming companies um, and uh, food companies as well. Um, the project I'm going to talk to you about um, very briefly now was for MSC Cruises, which is um, an Italian cruise company, family owned, um, very traditional in as much as um, they've never done anything uh, with social media or the blogosphere or indeed any kind of digital sort of non-paid for um, before they came to us a year ago. So in terms of a challenge, um, it was quite a big challenge. They wanted to raise awareness, as a lot of um, cruise companies these days do. Um, they wanted to raise awareness amongst younger travellers and show people that actually cruising is not just something that your parents do or that you do when you're retired, um, that it's much more... Um, immersive than that, that you actually get to see some of the places you visit properly. Um, it's about the food, it's about the international um, experience. And they wanted to reach out to uh, bloggers and work with a group of bloggers uh, in order to do that across their key territories um, in Europe. So I think that was uh, off the top of my head, Spain, Germany, France, Italy and various others. Um, so for us, it was a, a big challenge there. One of the things that we're very strong on. I mentioned already our media partnerships and uh, the background we've got in, in traditional editorial and television. We've also, we also work with a huge range of bloggers right the way across the world. So for us, this was a, a fantastic project to get our teeth into. Now, what MSC wanted to do is create an ongoing relationship uh, with these bloggers. So it's about much more than just creating a great trip and uh, the trip finishing and you walking away with a bunch of data this is something that lives on and on and on and indeed if you if you now hashtag msc splendida uh, which is the name of the ship that we featured um that's now been picked up by consumers and that uh conversation is still carrying on th over three months after the project finished so it gives you an idea of just how important this stuff is now um part of what we were doing was uh raising awareness with younger travelers but also um, promoting their new ship, which was uh, Davina, which launched uh, earlier this year. So there's was, there was quite a wide brief, but they wanted to do something that was quite innovative. Um, and uh, 
it was important that it had to be different for the bloggers as well. So blog trips are nothing particularly new. Nicola was talking about just now uh, trips that they've run. James was talking before and um, bloggers are going on trips all the time with brands. But the challenge for us was how to make that exciting for the bloggers as well as, as consumers and also as well as uh, making that project stand out for the brand. So as Steve alluded to just now, what we did is um, created a trip um, where we invited six bloggers from around Europe that we kind of selected and already worked with that worked uh, in terms of this brief and we put together a trip for them. They all had um, their own butlers and champagne on tap and all that kind of stuff and it was great fun. But really the, the, there's nothing particularly innovative about that. What was innovative about this project and what was different and what did excite the bloggers and in turn excited those bloggers about MSC Cruises was the fact that we gave them each... Uh, I know Steve mentioned three camera crews. There's actually a lot more than that, but each of these bloggers had their own camera crew um, and a, pro a professional production company on hand to help them tell their story. So we basically gave them the keys to the ship so that they could tell their stories their way, and we were there to facilitate that. And I think that's what kind of made this particularly successful. So hopefully this video is going to tell you a little bit about that. Look at that. So hopefully that gives you a, a flavour of um, not only how the videos kind of looked, but also the trip. And it was about much more than just what went on on the ship. The great thing about this was that it was, as I said earlier, about showing people that cruising is not just about stopping off for a few hours in a place and being herded round, that you actually do get to engage with the places you visit and, and get under the skin of those places. And uh, a lot of these videos really... Uh, got that across to people. Was they were all very, very personal accounts from the bloggers to their audiences. And their audiences are, they basically look to the bloggers that we're working with for recommendations on where to travel. So a great example of, of that is um, someone who's here today, actually from, from the trip, Anna O, oh, whose um, blog was mentioned on there, Mrs. O Around the World. Now, she has a great relationship with, um, I don't know how many followers, far too many, but... Um, each of she has a relationship with each of those people and, and she was quite open uh, before the trip about the fact that she doesn't go on cruises. Um, and so her audience watched that experience happen and, and her perception of cruising changed. And you can spend gazillions on uh, traditional media. We're not here to talk about that. We all know that. Um, you could spend a lot on editorial. You can spend a lot on all kinds of media. But there's no better way of getting your message out there than exciting people who already have a relationship with their audience. And, and that's something that, that works really well for this. Um, so just to recap, in terms of some of the results that we got, um, we, uh, we've talked about that stuff, so we know all about the, uh, the background. So the important stuff, right? Um, we got nearly three million brand interactions just on Twitter in three months. Now, this is going up all the time, so it's probably hideously out of date. But um, that means not only eyes on the brand, but click-throughs to MSC's site, uh, retweets, um, conversations that were started on Twitter just about MSC Cruises. And I say it again, a very traditional brand, really big company, but not somebody that was 
seen as active in this way and, and engaging with audiences in this way. And it really made people reconsider that brand. Um, again, this is from a few weeks back, and these video views are going up all the time. Now, I know Nicola was talking about some really impressive video views just now, and um, it's fantastic. It, it doesn't always happen like that, not to take anything away from what you guys do, which is amazing. But I think there are ways of doing stuff strategically, and there are ways of, of um, scratching around in a haystack and finding people to work with, and h somehow working out a way of, of getting some great publicity. And sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you get it wrong. But if you are spending budget on stuff, and you do want to know uh, what you're going to get out of it, I think you, you, there's an argument for being much more strategic about how you were, and it comes back to the planning and stuff. Um, so we got, it says here, almost 19,000 views, so 620 hours of viewing in just three weeks. Um, works out at, at about 34 minutes per video. Now, if you think each of these videos is about a minute and a half long, and uh, I doubt many people in this room spend uh, 34 minutes watching video or even two minutes watching video. It's very, very difficult to get people's attention these days. So to get 34 minutes of, of uh, so 34 hours per video and a one and a half minute video people watching is again you've got to be you've got to be thinking about what that content is doing and how it's getting that uh, that story across um, and again one video alone got over 10,000 views now we weren't seeding these videos they weren't uh, we weren't going to a partner company and and getting guaranteed views this was organic uh, views and it wasn't um, Again, we weren't kind of lucking into this stuff. This was strategically planned. We knew the traffic figures that, uh, that our bloggers were getting. We knew the relationships that they had. We knew the fact that they weren't uh, uh, cruisers, that, that in fact, I think only one person on our, our trip had been on a cruise before. So um, all of this stuff was, uh, was planned um, from the outset. One thing I should say as well, we were working, as Steve said just now, with Lindsay Devon from a company called Heaven Publicity. Now, another thing we're really strong on and, and that works really well with this was actually getting the message out there in the industry and, and telling other people um, about what MSC was doing. And it makes a huge statement about the brand um, if, you can actu if you're actually seen to be forward-thinking in this way. And again, in terms of content, there's been a lot of talk today about user-generated content uh, versus... Um, professionally produced content and then super duper TV budget expensive content um, and I think that each of those things has a place definitely in today's marketing uh, spend and should be on your radar now it all comes down to and I say it again this is how we work it all comes down to what you want to achieve at the start of that project so user generated content is great in terms of telling people about uh, the trips that you run or the product or the destination. Um, what you've got to ask yourself though, and I think this is really important, is how, what kind of message are you sending out to people about your brand if you've got someone with a camera kind of and it's all very homemade and I'm here in such and such talking, you know, and I'm having a great time. For some brands that will work really, really well. You can't get better than having someone there who's massively excited about your product or your trip or your experience talking about that but for some brands that's not going to be appropriate and it can make a detrimental statement to your brand and I think that's a question that's probably more relevant than whether you should be doing video or not it's what kind of video um, I'm going to hand back over to Steve now but hopefully that gives you an idea of what's out there and also in terms of the strategy what can be done and what can be achieved thanks so much So there you go, three different ways to do video, plus a few earlier tips at the start of the session. Um, we are running about two minutes behind, but we've got time for three questions.